Our story follows Chiyoko Fujiwara, a retired actress of the reputable Jine Studios. All of a sudden she retired, and no one understood how a thriving and talented artist would do so, especially at the peak of her career. Even going as far as to live under the radar with no sort of publicity since. No one knew why, but director Genya Tachibana plans on finding out. Sitting in his office at Lotus Studios, Genya is so immersed in re-watching his favorite films all featuring Chiyoko that it takes him a second to realize there's an earthquake. As the tremor stops, his cameraman Kyoji Ida checks up on him and tells him that the van is ready. They then set out to Chiyoko for a documentary interview. As they hike to her place, they pass by the ongoing demolition of Jinai Studios, and Genya gets sentimental calling the documentary a love letter to the once prominent studio. Kyoji doesn't really understand his devotion and excitement to a woman so old, but to Genya, she was more than that. They arrive at her recluse home and are greeted by an old Chiyoko who in Genya's eyes aged gracefully. As they finish up with the formalities, Genya hands her a box and to Chiyoko's surprise, it reveals an item she'd never thought she'd see again a key that opens the most important thing there is. She begins to tell them the story of her life's journey. She was born during the Great Kanto earthquake in 1923 and raised by her mother during the fascist era of Japan. Her father had died during the earthquake, but left them a shop which helped them to live just fine. Despite the turbulent era she was living in, as a teen, magazines featuring photographs of dreamy looking men were more important to her. It was also during this time a film director of Ginai Studios scouted her for a potential lead role in a movie. Although Chiyoko loved the idea of acting, her mother declined, saying that Chiyoko was only ever meant to be a homemaker. Greatly disappointed, she stands up and leaves the meeting to wander around outside while it snows, throwing snowballs at brick walls as a way to lighten her mood. The movie starts to become an embedded narrative as Chiyoko tells her story. The recounting of memories becomes one with the films she starred in. Genya and Kyoji become immersed that they also appear in her retelling of events. Suddenly, a man with a suitcase and fleeing the police runs into her. He helps her up and the two share a moment before it gets cut short by the sound of policemen rushing in. He climbs up a nearby wall and into a park to stay out of their sights. The police chief approaches Chiyoko, asking her if she had seen the man with a suitcase and painting. Chiyoko is scared and tongue-tied as she looks to the ground to avoid eye contact she sees it stained with red. She discreetly covers it with snow and ultimately points to a different direction. As they take their leave, she hurriedly climbs over the wall and aids him. They go to her father's store and hide him at the back. He thanks her and reveals that he's an artist that opposes the ongoing Sino-Japanese war. Chiyoko's curiosity wanders to the covered painting and she asks to see what it contains, but tells her that it's a sketch of a painting only planning to continue it once he gets back home. He tells her that during winter his hometown gets filled with snow as far as the eye can see, and as Chiyoko shows interest in it, he promises to take her there once peace resumes, as a token of his gratitude. She then notices the key hanging from his neck. He says that it opens the most important thing there is. He promises to show it to her soon, and just like that, Chiyoko falls in love with him. The next day on her way home from school, Chiyoko sees his bloodied bandage and key on the snow. She rushes home only to be met with a crowd of people and the police at the front of the store. An employee tells her in secret that he had fled to the station. With this information, she hurriedly leaves. Although she had just arrived just in time to see him getting on the train, she slips and fails to reach him. At the present, Genya realizes she had joined the film industry in hopes of the artist recognizing and finding her. Chiyoko affirms this saying she didn't even care about the movie. As they prepare to board and set sail on the cruise ship, the director is overjoyed at the fact of Chiyoko agreeing to her mother's visible dismay. She is then introduced to Eiko Shimao, the studio's prime actress at the time, who ironically only scores a side character role in the movie. The ship departs and Chiyoko stares at the key hanging from her hand, still lovestruck at the thought of meeting the artist. Suddenly a man snatches it from her and fights her attempts in getting it back. Aiko comes in and introduces him as Junichi Otaki, a famous director in the making. She remarks that Junichi loves auditioning actresses. He returns it to her and Chiyoko shares to them that the key was given for safekeeping and that it will be returned to the owner once they meet again in Manchuria, the place they're heading to for filming. Junichi asks for the name of the man. Chiyoko is unable to answer. Aiko comments that she'll never find him since the only thing she knows about him is his hobby for painting. 
The scene transitions into Chiyoko's first movie. As her and Eiko's character go back and forth, Chiyoko stops, struggling to remember the next line. Aiko calls for a cut and complains to the director that amateurs like her shouldn't be given the lead role. In response to that, Chiyoko blurts out her line with passion and vigor, and although the director compliments her for it, Aiko realizes Chiyoko is a threat to her career. During a break, Junichi compliments her and asks about the key again. Aiko joins in and tells her of a fortune teller nearby who can help her in her search. They visit the said place, and as the fortune teller asks her questions about whether the man she's looking for owns the key hanging from her neck, Chiyoko is completely convinced and sold, as he tells her that the artist is in the northern part of Manchuria. Chiyoko completely abandons the shoot and takes a train to the north. Kyoji sees it impulsive and disrespectful while Genya justifies it as an action of a committed heart. All of a sudden, the train comes to a halt and the scene shifts. Outside are gun-wielding bandits on horseback, riding to the train. Chiyoko wakes up after getting knocked out and rushes to a nearby exit and struggles to open it. Once it does, she blindly goes in and the two follow behind. The scene shifts again to a palace under siege. A chambermaid tells her that the Lord, the artist, is in the tower nearby. Flaming arrows fly overhead, but that doesn't stop Chiyoko in her pursuit. She runs to the tower, but upon arriving, she's greeted with the sight of a dead body on the throne. In tears and despair, she takes the katana on the floor, just about to end it all, when an apparition of an old woman with a spindle wheel appears. She tells Chiyoko that her lord is waiting for her in the realm of the dead, and for her to get there, she has to drink the cup of tea she offers. Chiyoko finishes it in one go, but only realizes after that she's tricked. The old woman cackles, telling her that she is doomed to forever suffer in the flames of eternal love. The apparition disappears and the fake corpse dissolves as well. Completely hopeless, Chiyoko awaits her impending death as the tower beams start to fall in. Suddenly, Genya dressed as a marshal saves her, telling her that the artist is kept prisoner at her hometown and that he'll escort her going there. They ride away on horses with Kyoji following behind on foot. Then Genya gets shot from an enemy rifle. The scene ends and shows the present moment showing Genya and Chiyoko who are so into the reenactment of the scene. Chiyoko asks if Genya can still play the hero next, and he obliges. In the next film memory scene, she's walking a dirt road when she passes by a group of men traveling with a palanquin. She assumes they're carrying the artist as a prisoner, and while they're not looking, she sets off a smoke bomb and cuts it open. To her surprise, the prisoner turns out to be Aiko, and they fight, but she's outnumbered by her men. Up until Genya, who's a traveling swordsmaster, comes in to save her. He tells her to leave to continue her search, and she does so, but Aiko follows closely behind. They continue their skirmish, but when Chiyoko comes close to defeating her, she asks her the whereabouts of the artist. Aiko says that he's in Kyoto, but by the time she gets there, his head would probably be on display. She sets off a smoke bomb and escapes. The scene shifts again to Kyoto in the Tokugawa period, with Chiyoko as a geisha artist. She begs Aiko, who's also a geisha and her mentor, to let her leave, but she gets punished for trying to visit a prisoner. She's brought back to her room, and Eiko orders Genya to stand guard outside. Naturally, he helps her escape as she dresses up as an unassuming citizen. As she leaves the Okia, she sees the prison in flames and hears word on the street of anti-shogunate prisoners escaping. Suddenly, she bumps into an escapee, who turns out to be the artist. He recognizes her, but as the sound of samurai draws near, he climbs up a gate, telling her to return the key at the promised place. He flees, and a trio of samurai approaches her, asking her if she had seen a rogue samurai. She points to a different direction, but the police chief, dressed as a samurai, recognizes her. He points his blade at her when Genya comes down from the roof and offers her his horse. She flees with it, and the scene shifts frame to frame, showcasing the many period drama movies she had starred in all the while still in the search of the artist. Though she joined the industry for him, the joy written all over her face goes to show how much fun she had during the early years of her career. But it's cut short as she meets the police chief again, who throws her in a jail cell with Aiko. Aiko tells her to tell them what they want to know, but Chiyoko declines saying she could never betray the artist and how she loves him even more as each day goes by. Aiko scoffs and calls her gullible, saying under her breath that people's feelings change and how all of them are the same. It's revealed by their other cellmates that all of Aiko's earnings were stolen by a man she loved, who then ran away with another woman. The door to the prison opens, revealing Genya, who's in tears at the sight of Chiyoko. He tells her that he's here to bail her out. 
As they exit prison, the police chief reveals that they didn't need her anymore as the artist had been caught. To Chiyoko's right, she sees the artist getting taken away to a separate prison. Despite the shock, she runs to him. Yet the door closes behind them. She yells and bangs on the door persistently. Just as the door gives way, she pursues him in the dark, running blindly in the seemingly endless tunnel. She reaches another metal door, and as it opens with ease, the scene transitions into the bombing of Tokyo during the Second World War. Eiko catches her, as she's about to run off and slaps her for being reckless, forcing her back into the bomb shelter with the others just in time before bombs are dropped. Afterwards, Chiyoko returns to her hometown, only to find everything reduced to rubble. She looks around more in hopes of finding something that had at least survived during the disaster. And then she sees it. A painting of her on the wall with the words, We will meet again, written beside it. To Chiyoko, it was a glimmer of hope in her darkest hour. Suddenly, she passes out in the present day, worrying both Jenya and Kyoji. Shortly after she wakes up, Jenya tells her that they'll continue tomorrow, but Chiyoko insists on finishing it all today, as she's uncertain if she'll remember anything then. Continuing off during the post-war era, Chiyoko tells them they still struggled to survive, and what made them persevere in the studio was their innate desire to create good films. She recalled that things were hectic for her, but despite all that, her hopes of reuniting with the artist remained. Jenya blurts out how busy they were then, which surprises both Chiyoko and Kyoji. Jenya reveals he worked under Junichi as a junior, never being promoted in any type of way because Junichi kept him at that spot. On set, as he introduces himself to Junichi and Aiko, he accidentally insults her. Junichi tells him that just like the audience, actresses need flattery, to which he says he'll teach him. The scene then transitions to Chiyoko on a balcony of the same beach, martini glass in hand just staring at the endless horizon. Junichi comes in and flirts with her, though Chiyoko doesn't respond. She's visibly flattered as he describes her as a beautiful color. Their faces close in for a kiss, but the sound of the glass clinking the key grounds her. Her expression changes to sadness and she leaves the room. As she goes home to her mother, she finds pictures of suitors on the table. Chiyoko complains and reminds her to turn them down, but her mother insists as she won't stay young. Chiyoko tries to reason with her as she's still waiting for the artist, however. She ends up getting scolded, saying she can't keep waiting for a man who won't return. Things start to get heated, and as her mother mentions the fact of her not knowing whether he's dead or alive, she cries. The scene shifts into a film with Eiko who scolds her, but just as she's about to respond with her line, she's tongue-tied by the reflection of the old woman behind Eiko. Because of this, the director calls for a cut, and Eiko gets up to go rest. Chiyoko realizes that the key is gone and starts to panic. On the other hand, Eiko exits the set with a pouch in her hand. She's greeted by her daughter and son who are being cared for by Genya. She ties up the pouch string and tells him that everything on set is about to get rough. He's confused, and as he checks, everyone is all over the place looking for the key. As they bombard Chiyoko with questions about what the key is for, then the scene transitions to a different movie with her as a teacher. Just as her students bring up the question of his appearance, she breaks down in grief. In the present day, it shows Chiyoko telling the pair how she loved the artist so much, but is pained by the fact that she can't even remember his face anymore. Later, Chiyoko apologizes for getting emotional, and they continue where they left off. Jenya mentions her marriage after losing the key. Chiyoko affirms this by saying she married Junichi to Kyoji's shock. Although this isn't news to him, Jenya still looks sorrowful as she declares it. Chiyoko recalls books falling off the shelf on set, and as she tries to put it back in place, she sees the key. Junichi walks right in a confrontation and is speechless. Then Eiko joins in revealing that Junichi had asked her to do so in order to get Chiyoko to marry him. Although she regrets being the thief, she explained that she had done it as all she ever wanted was to get rid of her ever since the filming of her first movie in Manchuria, even revealing that the fortune teller was a ploy to get her to leave the shoot in the first place. Chiyoko asks if she knew about his whereabouts all along, but Eiko scoffs saying she never did. She adds that even Junichi discovered about the whole goose chase she had put her through. Chiyoko asks again what she had done to her only for Eiko to bitterly reply that she was jealous of her. How loving and devoting herself to only one man kept her young. Junichi tries to change the topic, but the look on Chiyoko's face showed that she was completely done with him. A young Jenya interrupts them, saying that there's a visitor for Chiyoko. The visitor turns out to be the now old police chief, 
who tries to apologize and gives her a letter from the artist. Chiyoko reads the letter and abruptly leaves, not listening to what else the police chief had to say. The letter mentions his hopes of reuniting with her at his hometown of Hokkaido, to which Chiyoko left the studio for, despite the weather. As she endlessly runs, the path she takes becomes oddly reminiscent of the scenes in the movies she starred in. From her days as an amateur actress leading period dramas to the kaiju movies she has recently done. She hitchhikes on a truck at midnight with Genya as the driver, and in the morning she rides a bus with barely any sleep. When the bus is stopped by the deep snow blocking the road, Chiyoko decides to walk through it. The fatigue starts to catch up to her, but the thought of finally meeting him again proves stronger as she continues to push herself. The memory shifts to another movie, Chiyoko donning an astronaut suit on the moon. She sees an easel and canvas and decides to run for it. As she gets closer, she sees a painting of the artist, but realizes he's walking away. He turns around to see her, but just waves. Despite her begging for him to wait, he disappears into thin air. Chiyoko is disheartened and in tears. Kyoji and Genya can only stare. However, she looks up to the stars and shouts on how she'll still try to find him. The movie transitions into another scene situated in the same film. Genya asks her if she really must go, but Chiyoko says she made a promise. She boards the rocket Genya tries to chase after her, confessing his love for her while Kyoji holds him back. As they hear the countdown for takeoff reach zero, the frame suddenly shakes and Chiyoko realizes something is wrong. The frame zooms out revealing the set and film staff in panic as the ground beneath shakes. Equipment around falls and the lights go out. Genya looks at Chiyoko, who is trying to get down from set, when he sees the ceiling about to give in. Genya rushes to her, then the ceiling falls, narrowly hitting her. She lands on the ground and Genya covers her with his body, then debris falls on them. The tremor stops and everyone hurries to save them. Luckily, they're unharmed, and the people applaud Genya, but Chiyoko is completely out of it as she sees the reflection of the old woman on her helmet. In a panic, she breaks the glass and rushes out of the set, solidifying her retirement and thus beginning her 30 years out of the spotlight. Genya spots her key on the floor, and he keeps it in hopes of returning it to her. In the present, she holds the framed wall with the painting of her on it, and Genya asks why she disappeared so suddenly. After the accident, she tells him that she doesn't want the artist to see her so aged, adding that he wouldn't recognize her now anyways. As she stares at the painting, her reflection changes into the old woman, but this time she doesn't run away. She accepts it. She passes out again and another earthquake strikes, with everything around them shaking and falling. Genya sees debris about to fall, and without a second thought, jumps in to save her once again. The tremor stops and Chiyoko admires how he's always there to save her before collapsing completely. An ambulance rushes her to the hospital and the two follow right behind. Kyoji feels melancholic at how Chiyoko never really met him again, and Genya confesses that on the night the police chief came in, the guilt-ridden man told him that he had tortured the artist to death for refusing to talk. After all this time, Chiyoko was looking and chasing after a man that had no longer existed. They reach the hospital, and the doctor tells them devastating news of Chiyoko's condition. Genya falls to his knees, but as they go to check up on her, he puts up a facade. They apologize for asking too much of her, but she reassures them as it made her happy. She says it was time to say goodbye. Though Genya tells her she'll be fine, she calls him a bad liar. The pair can only look down in sadness knowing what's about to come, but she tells them to not feel disheartened as she's going after the artist again. She thanks Genya for giving her the key back as it brought life back into her memories, saying that while she told them her story, she felt that her younger self had come alive. Genya, who starts to get emotional, tells her that she'll finally see him this time. Chiyoko passes away peacefully, but the present day transitions into one last movie scene. The rocket ship carrying Chiyoko finally departs. Genya and Kyoji can only look up at her with a heavy heart as the ship ascends from the station. As it leaves the moon, Traveling into the vast space of stars, she tells herself that what she truly loves was chasing after him. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.